Hello, and welcome to How I Solve This, where we dive into a specific business problem and share how one awesome admin chose to solve that problem with Salesforce. Today, we're talking about using emoji as image flex. And to help us with that, I'd like to introduce Michael Kalodner, an independent Salesforce consultant specializing in nonprofits. Welcome, Michael. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Michael, can you summarize the key business problem for us? Yeah. One of my clients, the Academy Group, has lots of data on their students. And sometimes the text or the numbers just aren't evocative enough to catch users' attention at the right moment. Whether it's in a single field or a compact layout, there are always moments when it would be nice to have an image that conveys meaning in an instant. That's great. And I'm sure a lot of admins watching have that same problem. So Michael, how did you solve it? Well, Mark, here's how I solved this. Emoji are really fun. They're super evocative. They're really easy to use in Salesforce. And if you choose the right one, they can convey meaning quickly. You can always put an image in a formula in Salesforce to display it using an uploaded document. But it's really hard to work with those documents and formulas. And also, they don't always look great. But you can put emoji in a formula really easily, and they're just as easy to see at a glance. That sounds great. I'd love to see this in action. Sure, Mark. Let's jump into my sandbox over here where I have an example of the report I built. Here's our student supports flag for the Academy Group before I put in the emoji. You can see it sorts in the order of flags so you can see who needs the most help, but it's kind of a wall of text and numbers. It's really hard to see at a glance what's going on or why the people who've sorted to the top need the help they do. So here's that same report after I added emoji into my formulas. Totally now, transformed. It's super totally easy. transformed, right? It's yeah. super easy. You can see exactly who needs help. You can see what they need help in and like how much help each of them needs. That's I've great. Also, I've also put these flags on the contact record page. So when you go to a student page, if you're looking for information like their mobile number or their email, your eyes are drawn immediately to these colorful flags in the right-hand side. So you can see if there's anything you should be checking in with them about or additional support they might need. Let's see under the hood. Will you show us the formula that you used? Absolutely. Of course, each of them is a different formula, but here's one. This is the formula generating that GPA flag. It's pretty simple. The first thing it does is it just takes the text from the GPA rollup field that I've created using the declarative lookup rollup summary tool. And then it puts in a space. And then we have a nested if statement for the emoji. And it's pretty simple. If it's in the top range of the GPA, it's going to use that green check emoji. If it's in the middle range of the GPA, it's going to use that warning emoji. And finally, if it's in the lower range or if there's no GPA, we're going to get that red dot emoji which indicates there's a real problem or the data is missing and we haven't collected it, which is also a problem. Michael, how did you pick these emoji from the giant selection of hundreds of emoji? That's a great question, Mark. Picking the emoji was kind of the hardest part here. It was even harder than writing the nested, nested if formulas because there are so many to choose from. And in this case, for example, I, I needed three that went together in like a ranked order, but there's not a green dot and a yellow dot to go with the red dot. Uh, and there's not obviously a red check or anything like that. So I had to pick from various categories to come up with my green check, yellow warning, red dot options. And, and in this case, they go together really well. And I think they convey the meaning really nicely. But there were a lot to choose from. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for sharing this solution with us. It's my pleasure. This was really fun, Mark. Thanks. If you want to read more about awesome admins just like Michael, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. And remember to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube so you can join us for more episodes of How I Solve This. And if you have a good story of how you solved a business problem at your org, let me know. Reach out to us on Twitter at Salesforce Admins Know I or on the Trailblazer community. See you next time on How I Solve This.